volevo partecipare alle Olimpiadi però c'era un però che volevo farlo come donna perché io con me For the first time in a long time I'm gonna have to disagree with JK Rowling I truly do believe that trans people do belong in the Paralympics because if crippling gender dysphoria doesn't qualify <laughs> I tried to say it with a straight face. I tried to say it with a straight face, but I... <laughs> Let's get into it. What's up, everybody? Ty Rivera here, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to be for real. I'm going to be for real. Let me... <laughs> Let me straighten out my mic. I kind of did crack myself up on that one. And it's just because we're going to talk about this competitor that was in the Paralympics. And I did want to actually get into this because JK Rowling, in my opinion, is really doing a service because I really do feel like the Paralympics was just trying to get in on the trans mania and be like, okay, well, maybe if we get a little bit of attention about this, pretending not to want attention about it. And then JK J.K. Rowling stepped in and made a tweet about it. And of course, people were getting mad about it because they want an excuse to call J.K. Rowling a bigot at every turn. But in my opinion, J.K. Rowling, even though I know she identifies as a turf, is a very important figure because J.K. Rowling has f you money and she will use her f you money to say f you to anybody that she feels is standing in the way of what her mission is and I do respect that because otherwise why do you have fuck you money if you're not every once in a while gonna say fuck you about things that you actually do consider important and so when it comes to JK Rowling I fully do respect what she's doing especially when it comes to the Paralympics because not a lot of people take them seriously and I'm not trying to be mean that's just what it is and and in some cases, J.K. Rowling, when she throws her voice at this, is really standing up for people that in some cases cannot stand up for themselves. No pun intended. But it's true. Some of these people literally cannot stand up for themselves. It's the Paralympics. But anyway, J.K. Rowling was not having it because this trans Paralympian that runs track, why is it always track? There is always something going on with track and field. But she runs track and she is a 51-year-old born male running against the women. So I'm going to read this story and I know that some of you are going to get mad at me because I'm using she and her pronoun. I'm so tired of everybody with the pro. I don't care about pronouns. I care about pronouns least than anything in the world. Every video somebody's going to be like, they'll always be a he. And it's like, I don't care that much about pronouns. I just don't think they should be running against women. So if you're more worried about the pronouns than the fact that we agree on the actual issue which this person shouldn't be competing with biological females women I would always say I mean like you've got me on so many counts I don't ever say cisgender that's not my thing I'm very clear about knowing why that's a thing so it's like split hairs if you want to if you're that upset because I don't talk exactly the way that you want me to talk stop following me now because I'm never gonna talk a hundred percent the way everybody wants wants me to talk. Jesus Christ. Let's get to the story already. I found this on MSNBC. That's where I found it. And I wasn't even looking for it this way, but it gives me exactly what I want, which is going to be the woke perspective, because that's what they want us all to buy into is the woke perspective. And then the first article, literally the first article that came up when I Googled it was MSNBC, which I didn't know how left leaning MSNBC was. I always think of NBC as being a respect respectable and reputable. It was one of the big three. You know, it used to be NBC, ABC, and CBS. When I was growing up, those were the major ones. Yeah, you had like PBS and whatever else, but those were the major. And so you expect unbiased news from news people. Whatever happened to unbiased news? Can we talk about that? Maybe that's just something I created in my head. The Berenstein or Berenstain bears effect, or is it the Mandala effect? Whatever the effect is that makes you remember things differently than they actually were. Maybe I just thought that news was supposed to be unbiased. Maybe I just remember when I was younger and I'm dating myself, Dan Rather and Tom Brokaw being more about just giving the news. The news were boring when I was growing up. That's what I remember. It wasn't like now where it's like 
everybody's got an opinion. And how about you just give me the story and let me extract what I need from it? How about you save the opinion? That's what you watch Andy Rooney for? Was it Andy Rooney that used to do 60 Minutes? At the end, you know, I've gone off on so many tangents. Let's get to the story. So the headline, oh, it says opinion right there. God bless America. Well, leave it to me. <laughs> All right. Well, I only made it to the ninth grade, you guys. Let's be overjoyed that I can even read. How about we do that? The headline is J.K. Rowling went after trans Paralympian sprinter Valentina Petrillo. I wonder if she's related to Sophia Petrillo. Picture it. Sicily, 1912. Which I guess not picture it because I looked into what her disability was. Turns out Spoiler alert, it wasn't crippling gender dysphoria. It actually is a degenerative eye condition that she has that allows her to only see 1 50th, I believe is what it said, of what the rest of us see. It's a condition that's been lifelong and started when she was young, when he was young. Because I do believe in properly gendering people. When they were young, she wasn't a little girl. He was a little boy. Now she's a 51-year-old tag. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let me let me get it together. Headline, J.K. Rowling went after trans Paralympian Valentina Petrillo and failed. Debatable. I don't know that she failed. I haven't seen J.K. Rowling take a lot of L's, to tell you the truth. A lot of times, I agree with J.K. Rowling, but let's go on. If you thought J.K. Rowling was done ranting about transgender athletes now that the Paris Olympic Games have long been over, you'd be wrong. After taking about two weeks off from social media, the once beloved children's author was back at it this week, going on at length about 51-year-old Valentina Petrillo, an Italian Paralympic sprinter who happens to be transgender. You're already getting on my nerves because the fact that she is transgender is why this is all going on. She's transgender in sports, which everybody has already let you know that we don't think is fair. The whole world has pretty much let you know that, but for some some reason these governing bodies refuse to accept that so making it seem like JK Rowling went after her because she happens to be transgender transgender is the reason for the season girl Rowling posted a grainy photo of Petrillo on X and wrote why all the anger about the inspirational Petrillo the cheat community has never had this kind of visibility out and proud cheats like Petrillo prove the era of cheating shaming is over what a role model i say we give lance armstrong his medals back and move on hashtag cheats hashtag no shame she's a writer what do you want from jk rowling was she supposed to put out a boring tweet that nobody would pay attention to this is about clicks we're in a click-based society catch up people okay but anyway elsewhere several of rowling's gender critical allies also described petrillo's participation in the games as unfair and called on paralympic officials to ban trans women from the games and really when it comes down to it if we're talking about the Paralympics haven't these people been through enough isn't life already not stacked in their favor enough that at least we can give them a level playing field when it comes to competing against people that are at least the same biological sex do we have to keep reminding the Paralympians that life is never going to be fair for them and they're never going to get the kind of respect that they should actually get because when it comes down to it they are still top tier athletes from the Paralympic community. So should we not give them the same respect? It's not allowed in the regular Olympics. Why is it allowed in the Paralympics? Okay, quote, this inclusive policy in the name of being progressive is actually regressive as the policy excludes women because of biology. Tennis legend Martina Navratilova wrote on X, Navratilova, who has long been vocal about her preference for excluding trans women from womanhood in general, continued. You won't find women who identify as men taking places of males because biology. Males and females are different. People are going to try to make it sound like that's transphobic but who knows better than Martina Navratilova, who not only top tier athlete for her entire adult life, possibly even when she was a kid. I don't know how old she was when she started, but we all know Martina Navratilova. Well, if you're over a certain age, some of the young kids may 
not. But we all know top tier athlete. Who would know better than Martina Navratilova? So even trying to make it sound like she was being transphobic when she says this kind of stuff, I really don't feel it is. I feel like it's her giving her expert opinion as a person who has competed at the top level. Also, I don't know what Martina Navratilova, this writer, is talking about, but she is an LGBTQ icon. She literally is an icon to our community. She was one of the first high visibility athletes, male or female, to really come out and just say, hey, I'm a lesbian, take it or leave it. Martina Navratilova kicked open a lot of closet doors and wet a lot of lesbian lips, if you ask. <laughs> Okay, I'll get back to the story. Sharon Davies, a former Olympic swimmer turned anti-trans media darling, called on sports authorities to, quote, do what everyone can see is right rather than what's easy and ban trans athletes. Okay, in all fairness, I mentioned what Valentina Petrillo's condition was, and that's very insensitive. She may not be able to see what's right, literally. Enough with the jokes? Fine, I'll go on. I'm just saying, you guys could get the news anywhere. I'm having fun. But here's the thing. Petrillo failed to qualify for the T12 400 meter final after she finished third in her semi-final heat. In that race, the trans runner recorded a personal best time of 57.58 seconds, finishing behind Iran's Hajar Okay, that's that's quite enough. Safarazadi got her print. <sighs> Trust me, it's a name. There's a lot of consonants by a full second and a half in sprint events. That's a lifetime. <sighs> Okay, so she didn't do well at all. This is the point. And people, I don't think, understand because they're not used to people being consistent anymore. J.K. Rowling isn't saying that males shouldn't compete with females unless they suck. She's saying under no circumstances should males compete with females. And this woman that they describe as an anti-trans media darling, Sharon Davies, also a former Olympic swimmer, again, who is more qualified to speak on this than the actual athletes that used to compete or do compete. Who are we looking to if we're not looking to former top tier athletes and current top tier athletes? How is it anti-trans to just tell the truth? Nothing bothers me more than things being considered anti because it's the truth. So the story goes on. Petrillo began her medical transition in 2019 after a long career winning para-athletic national titles as a male athlete. Her times now are significantly slower than they were before, which suggests that the hormone change had a real impact on her athletic ability. Also could be the fact that she's 51 now. It could be the combination of the two. And I think that this is a way of them trying to slowly shoehorn trans women into the regular Olympics and sports in general is you throw a couple sucky ones in there, a couple that are past their prime, a couple that are going to make it look like women can compete with trans women and it's a level playing field. And then when you start slipping in the good ones, the young ones, the ones that will actually dominate, then you can always fall back on, well, remember we tried it and there were plenty of women that were able to beat the trans women. So biologically, and it's like, no, no, stop trying to do that. Now I'm beginning to see why the turfs are mad at me because you crack the door, they're going to try to kick it in. So you know what? I take it back. Everything I said on Twitter, it was it was a mistake. It was an accident. I misjudged you, turfs. I have your back 100%. I'm a turf. Send me a turf hat, somebody. So as the games began, Ukrainian runner Oksana Bertachuk was one of several of Petrillo's cisgender female competitors critical of Petrillo's participation. Quote, I find this not fair in my opinion, Bertachuk told BBC Sport. Bertachuk said she is not against transgender people in general, but in this situation, I do not understand and do not support it. Unlike Petrillo, Bertachuk made the final, finishing well ahead of the trans runner she implied had an unfair advantage. It doesn't matter. She shouldn't be there. This is an actual athlete that's saying, hey, this person shouldn't be there. There's only so many slots for females to be 
begin with. And then you drop those because now we have the trans athletes competing with them and it's just plain not fair. That's what it is. It's not fair. Whether it's the regular Olympics, the Paralympics, professional sports, whatever it is, males should not be competing with females. And if she's really about her shit, what she should do is transition to a woman and then still compete with the men and show them anything boys can do, girls can do better. But no. Petrillo's failure to dominate, she came short of making the final race in the T12 200 meter dash Friday, is yet another example of a trans athlete miraculously not winning an elite sporting competition that people such as Rowling and Navratilova claimed would be unfair. In 2016, trans discus thrower Ingrid Van Cranen finished ninth at the Paralympics and no one even noticed her participation because conservatives here and abroad hadn't yet chosen trans athletes as a political target. Well, that's because they didn't know where to look. Nobody was paying attention to that because they were just trying to slide them in at that point. They thought they were going to fly under the radar. Like I said, this was probably their long-term plan now that I see it is to slip them in the Paralympics because you can easily get away with disrespecting people with disabilities. I hate to say it, but that's just a fact of the world. People with disabilities get taken advantage of all the time and nobody cares. And this was just another case of that, if you ask me. Without the political fervor stoked by conservatives and the likes of Rowling, Petrillo's participation would probably have gone unnoticed as well. And I would have got away with it too if it hadn't been for you meddling kids. So would have 2021 Olympic weightlifter Laurel Hubbard, who failed to record a single lift and finished last in her division at the Tokyo Games. We keep hearing about how trans athletes have a natural advantage in sports, and yet we've yet to see a trans athlete win an elite international title in any sport. No, Leah Thomas does not count for this. While Thomas did win an NCAA title, it was at the amateur collegiate, not elite level, and her times were not necessarily comparable with the best swimmers in the world. It seems as if gender critical activists have noticed that trans athletes losing big competitions contradicts their argument that they have an unfair advantage. So those activists have recently shifted away from claiming that trans women would dominate all sports and instead accuse trans women of taking away a spot from a more deserving cis woman. Their words, not mine. Don't get mad at me. That's what the article says. But that's true. That's not a shift. That's something they've been saying from the beginning. You guys just tried to, like I said, slip in the less talented so that you you could make that your argument and then you could change it to, oh, now you're shifting to this. No, all along, we've all been saying not only is it unfair on a biological level, on a physical level, we've been saying you're also taking an opportunity away from an actual woman. We've all been saying that. This has been consistent from all of us. And I include myself because I've always been critical of this from the beginning. I didn't think that males had a place in female sports. I'm a little more sympathetic to this argument and it's a clever play on emotions especially for parents who may be hoping their daughters can one day get an athletic scholarship and avoid crippling educational debt but this line of thinking also results in the total exclusion of trans women athletes from all sports no it doesn't we've all said that there should be a separate trans category and it's been offered in certain places where there's been an open or trans category and trans people have not taken it up so why would that be? Why do we not ever focus on the trans athletes and say, yeah, why don't you just go do your own? Since they offered you one, we've all been wondering why you just don't do your own thing. Why is it such a problem? Why is it a thing? That's what I want to know. There hasn't been a trans athlete yet whose performance improved or even remained the same after starting estrogen. Those performances typically get worse, consistent with the general difference between cis men's and cis women's performances in many athletic measurements. There is no way to get fairness for trans athletes by forcing them to compete against cis men. Biology or not, that type of exclusionary policy would be a de facto ban on trans women athletes completely. Okay, so you're admitting that if the trans women that are on hormones have to compete with biological males, then they're not going to have a fair shot. 
But then when you take biological males and put them against biological females, but the biological males are on estrogen, now it's a level playing field. Make it make sense. As we wrestle with these new ideas of sex and fairness, we must value transhumanity equally with cis people. The proof is in the pudding. Trans women are not dominating women's sports and never will. Petrillo's relatively poor performance on the track should put an end to Rowling's rage, but of course, Rowling is past the point of no return. She will seethe and rage about trans people for the rest of her life because she is a bigot. I truly don't believe that J.K. Rowling is a bigot. I, in my heart of hearts, do think that J.K. Rowling is just using her platform to stand up for something that she does believe in, and that's the difference between male and female, man and woman. I don't know when that became a controversial stance, but I don't know how it helps, especially trans people, because we have reached the point for the trans community of diminishing returns. There was a point where things were becoming a lot more equal as far as the way trans people were getting treated. And then the activists started trying to push things that didn't need to be pushed. And sports is one of them. I've talked to many of my trans friends about it. And my trans friends have told me in so many words that not everything is for everyone. And if they have to sit out certain things because they ended up being able to live as the person that they truly do feel that they are in their head, then that is worth the trade-off of not being able to do certain other things that when it comes down to it are extracurricular. Yeah, sports are great, but you can always play in a local league. Like when it comes to baseball, football, a lot of things, they have special gay leagues. Trans people are allowed in those and I'm sure they would let them compete against anybody that they want to. So if you want to compete, go compete. But find the place where it's going to be the most fair to everybody involved. Maybe if it's something like that where it's just for fun nobody will really mind but when it comes to certain sports yeah your physicality is going to come into play because people could get hurt there was that volleyball player that got spiked on by a trans woman and is now paralyzed are we pretending that that just was some sort of fluke and how many women should have to risk that kind of fluke so that other people can feel comfortable and that's where i do agree with the turf mentality where it is a lot of women being forced to shut up and accept that no matter what they say or how they feel about it, men will always be able to dominate the situation and make it so they have to go along with whatever it is that men say and men decide. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to comment just to help me on the algorithm, but you don't know what to comment, just leave a knife because you know the Paralympic trans community is going to come for my neck. And if you get a chance and you want to see some of the craziness that's going on with TikTok, our good old buddy Roger is back at it again. And you can see that right here. Anyway, this has been Ty Rivera, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. They bought into his bullshit.